YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 Season of the Worthy Trials of Osiris video. All right, folks, we've got a new trailer today, and we're going to go through it. And also, I want to talk about the Trials of Osiris loot, the weapons, the armor, the exotics that are in the database, and share some thoughts on Trials of Osiris. Trials of Osiris will kick off tomorrow at a reset, and I will be playing it. However, I'm not going to be streaming it. I'm going to make my Zer video and then hop in with some channel members because, you know, I certainly need to carry when it comes to Trials of Osiris. But I've got some concerns and we're going to talk about those concerns in this video with regards to Trials of Osiris. So if you enjoy this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you really want to help the channel out, become a channel member. And again, apologies for my uh, candor or my voice here. I am just still really sick, but I am getting better. Safe to say I'm sleeping really well and uh, yeah, I'm getting a little bit better. All right, let's get into the video. So the first Trials of Osiris uh, will kick off tomorrow the 13th and we've all been waiting for this for a really long time. I think Trials of the Nine was okay, but we want Trials of Osiris. We want that Destiny 1 player experience and I do have a little bit of uh, some concern whether it, uh, they can capture that player experience we all love dearly from Destiny 1 with regards to going flawless, going to the lighthouse. Now, there's a few things you need to know. So, power does matter in Trials of Osiris like it did in Destiny 1 and how it does in Iron Banner. Now, Trials of Osiris is free to play for everyone. So, one of the questions we need to ask ourselves is, will Trials of Osiris be a hit or will it be a miss? Will it be filled with players or will it be empty or and when I mean empty will it just be the sweats meaning all the ones that are the highest power and just God at PvP one thing you do need to know is uh, this weekend and this weekend only the seasonal artifact power bump will be in play so in trials and in Iron Banner power does matter so the higher power you are well you're gonna tank more damage and do more damage and this weekend only the seasonal artifact power bump will be enabled because Bungie just couldn't get out of fix. So uh, after this weekend, for the Trials of Osiris weekends, um, the seasonal artifact will not count. Now looking over at Twitter, man, I've seen a lot of people who are already 1000 power. I even saw someone last night, I think his Twitter handle is Aussie Halo. He, uh, with his artifact, he's 1010 power. That's the pinnacle cap. Well. If he had full pinnacle gear on, that's the cap right there. And he's going to destroy people who are uh, 970, 950, whatever. He's, he's going to wreck a lot of people. Now, my concern is this. The people who had all the time to grind nonstop this weekend, are they just going to go in and steamroll people? Because the matchmaking is solely going to be connection-based and also card-based. So there's no skill-based matchmaking, which I think is good and bad. I, you know, I, I always have some mixed uh, thoughts on the whole skill-based matchmaking and connection-based. I feel like it should be a mix, but I know that the diehards, and you let me know in the comment section, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer connection-based? Do you prefer skill-based? Or do you would you like a blend? I personally would like a blend because I feel like sometimes it's, it's really a not, it's not a fun player experience when... You'll get like two matches in a row where you get completely demolished and then I'll just turn I'll turn off my PC and I'll stop or I'll switch back over to PvE and stop playing PvP. But at the same time, I feel like connection is really, really important, especially when playing competitive well, something competitive like Trials of Osiris, where everything is on the line to try to get to the lighthouse. My next concern is well, where is the loot? Um, if you're old like me, you remember the commercial Where is the Beef from I think it was Wendy's, I think. It doesn't seem like there's that many weapons. There's lots of armor and a few exotics, but they're not exotic weapons. They're, well, it's an exotic ghost shell and an exotic sparrow. But where are the weapons? You know, I was expecting when Trials of Osiris was to come back that they were going to throw in all of the Trials of Osiris weapons from Destiny 1. The Messenger, the Jewel of Osiris, the Doctrine of Spamming. Remember the good old Doctrine of Passing? Well, instead they brought back the Summoner. And when I look in the database or when I look in um, your collections, you can see that they all have random roles. Like I'm looking at the Summoner right now. It can roll with Rampage, Send Moment, Moving Target, uh, Range Finder. I mean, you get some pretty good roles in it. And they also brought back Tomorrow's Answer, which was, oh my lord, that was one of my favorite rocket launchers in PvP for Destiny 1. Because, well, it had grenades and horseshoes, one of the awesome perks from Destiny 1. However, it's not in Destiny 2. And when I'm looking at the database here, 
Yeah, I mean, it can roll with uh, tracking, it can roll with uh, shield disorient, disruption break, snapshot sights, threat detector. Yeah, no grenades and horseshoes. So, I mean, how really effective it, is it going to be? And I feel like right now, rocket launchers definitely need some love. I know Glad was tweeting about that last night about rocket launchers because, you know, we were trying to, we did some raids last night, and Izanagi's, the reload on it just stinks right now. I mean, it's still good for DPS, but Whisper of the Worm is pretty much what we're using right now. They also are bringing the Scholar back. That's the Scout Rifle from Trials of Osiris, which, if I recall correctly, I never really used. You know, I really wanted to see the Messenger, the Pulse Rifle, and also the Jewel of Osiris. And I wanted the Rocket Launcher back, but with grenades and horseshoes. I don't know why they um, they chose not to bring that perk back. The second concern I have for the season is, you know what, we might as well just start talking about it right now. Even though I was going to wait a full week to do a uh, review on the season. or Not even a review, but an in initial thoughts. I don't know how I'm feeling about the whole Seraph Tower things. I mean, maybe I need to give them a little bit more of a chance and see how the whole system works with upgrading the bunkers and things, but it kind of feels like Obelisk 2.0, and I really didn't feel like the Obelisk thing was that much of a fun player experience. I kind of feel like this season, or at least it's shaping up to be, but hopefully the roadmap is being vague. Remember, they said they did not want to reveal everything on the roadmap. They wanted us to kind of... Uh, uh, be in the dark about certain things and just, well, not be spoiled by things. From the PvE front, and I saw some of the PvPers, I think they were PvPers over on Twitter, MLG, YOLO, Swag, Pros, tweeting about that the PvE crowd over on Reddit is losing their minds because this season feels like it's heavily PvP-based based on trials. And let's be frank, uh, the PvP base, they do need their season. They've been in the dark for a very long time. So I'm happy for them. And guys, you know, always... What was that one line from Wolf of Wall Street? Always pay attention to those who don't clap for you when you win. Be happy for the PvP folks. Be happy that they have an activity now, that every weekend they have something to grind for, that they'll be streaming, that they'll be bringing you content and having a good time. I'm not a PvP beast. I, uh, I'm average at best. I did enjoy it a lot more in Destiny 1, and I will be playing Trials. And Actually, follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. And also on Instagram, Mesa underscore Sean, because well, um, I'll be playing with some channel members, Angle of Death and uh, Nothing But Air, and they're going to be streaming. So I will tweet out their streams, and you could come watch us play and see if we go flawless. I don't know how it's going to go, because my characters right now are nowhere near 1,000 power, and I don't see them becoming near 1,000 power. And I imagine we're going to get steamrolled when we start to get uh, get to the end of our card. Who knows? Now, if we look at the roadmap, just once again for perspective, yeah, it does look pretty crude. And that's on purpose, I believe, or at least according to the community manager from France, that they want to not spoil some things. But, you know, we've got Guardian Games, which is going to be a class competition for new legendary armor. And again, I always feel like we need more weapons, not necessarily armor. And uh, we don't even know what's going to happen after April. So hopefully some big things. And I kind of feel like this season is going to be like another season of the Drifter. And then come the summertime, things will ramp up. The story will ramp up. Because remember, they said in the original Vidoc that the final season is going to lead into just some uh, just like enormous crescendo. And then more than likely in September, we'll get another really, really big DLC. So we'll have to see. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. What do you guys think? Well, one, how do you feel about the PvE content so far? Do I need to give it more of a chance? Because, first off, going to do those Seraph Bunker events, um, they get really, really frustrating fast if you're there uh, by yourself and randoms and none of you guys know what you're doing, or at least some of the new folks. Because remember, that's free to play for everyone, too. Oh, the Season Artifact. That's another thing we need to talk about. Man, why did they just put anti-barrier rounds on sidearms and submachine guns? So back to using the recluse and um, I'm just not a sidearm fan you know everything just feels weaker um, a few of you guys asked me because I posted a really really funny uh, raid boss kill last night where the boss completely turned around on us but we still killed him um, what's our new raid loadouts because we pretty much had to change everything to do garden of salvation uh, Izanagi's it's still effective it's still good you're gonna do a lot of damage when you have honed edge but the problem is the reload yeah, the reload's still a problem. So, Whisper of the Worm, um, 
that's our go-to now for DPS. Another thing too is auto rifles, okay? They, they're, they're really, really good right now. My Reckless Oracle with um, Kill Clip and Outlaw is amazing right now. So let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a full breakdown of my of like raid builds basically and what I'm using. All right, so I've been rambling enough, but kind of wanted to just get some of that off my chest. You know, I like using my platform to have discussions and really want to hear from you guys in the comment section. What's your initial impressions of the PvE stuff and are you okay with the season kind of being a PvP focused season? And anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Let me roll this little quick one, one minute and 30 second trailer for you guys. So let me hashtag made it to the end. If you did make it to the end, drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at Mesa Sean. Check out my stream. Usually no worries on YouTube and that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir and here's the trailer. Change for tea. Ha! A joke. Here we go. You are invincible. Welcome to the Lighthouse Guardian. 